Hello, Internet. Hello, War of the Visions fans. I'm Jackie Fox. We just got a Near Automata collaboration reissue, and there are some parts of this that I am really excited about, like the fact that finally, um, and this is a first, this collaboration has been a first, maybe because the game it's tangentially related to is getting an EOS soon, and they wanted to give the voice actors a little bit more work to do, but... For this collaboration, we will be getting English voice acting, which hasn't even happened for the Final Fantasy collaborations thus far, and sounds pretty excellent. Like, it's very good, so take a listen to this. Um, I did that? Sorry, I don't remember. I wonder why they insisted on living in such large groups. Humans sure are weird creatures. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Today's episode is going to be a little less watching new units in Arena, but it's certainly going to be that. These are my newest lightning units, including my 9S. So, I'm going to do five matches with 9S to kind of get us warmed up. And also, I built the... Uh, the pod plus one as well so you can check out the stats there for the upgraded pod that's a lot of agility for an accessory and i love it um maybe not the best thing but thematically it's what i wanted to run with him along with sephiroth's coat uh just to give him a little bit extra hitting potential <coughs> and an additional way to be supportive that he didn't used to have as you can see, though, we'll start with Astrius being the most premium unit, about 12 to 13,000 uh, HP, a little over 1,500 attack. We've also got roughly one-third damage resistance when you look at the unit and area attack. Not very accurate, though, unfortunately. Same story really here for Esther, a little bit less HP, a bit more defense, and a bit less area attack resistance. Also, um maybe a little bit more accurate right around the same speed though these are these are roughly about 100 speed in this formation and then here we have noctis so i mean i'm sorry 9s so 9s still is around the same speed but under 10k hp same attack as them though and we're looking at 96 accuracy which is blowing them away and also pretty comparable uh in terms of general damage resistance to astrius at least in terms of the unit and area attack resistance a uh, little bit less unit attack resistance here though i'm going to be running shield and speed on this guy um and i guess that in certain cases, if you really want to reinforce your lightning team against evasive teams, you could also add into this a bit of uh, some of the runes that would assist you in that being uh, luck and accuracy. So a few things that I want to talk about here. If you do have uh, especially 9S, I think 9S's skill here, his skill upgrade was really, really cool, especially thematic and just, just kind of powerful in that Unlike a lot of these, which I have my complaints about, this is an all-in-one. This gives you the ability and gives your allies the ability to protect, protect um, on attack, on damage, while also giving them protect. So it's not like some of the other abilities also give out re-raise too, you know what I mean? So this is a really good double action and it's because if you have re-raise protection, you want to build a team where everyone has re-raise. Well, this is a team where 9S can give everyone protect and can also protect, protect. Um, so I think that this is pretty good. However, for two different reasons, I don't think that this collaboration is uh, something that I would advise most people to spend much, if any, biz on. Maybe a few luck pulls if you want, but there's two big issues here for me. So... One of the big gimmicks here, again, much like Final Fantasy IX, seems to be these like status protection mechanics. We have shielding protection. We have, uh, with 9S here, we have the protection protection. Um, and this is good, and he's a free unit. And if you built him up previously, I think he's a great free unit to have. 
um, and even to build to 140. <clears throat> and I think that his gimmick is pretty cool. And even though, as you can see from his sats, there are some ways that he suffers uh, compared to modern units, he is still a decent, a decent enough boy and fairly durable too, even on this team. I was thinking that against like an all magical team like this, I would run into a lot more issues, and I am certainly taking a lot more damage. Especially Astrius here is having some issues resisting magic in the way that he would usually resist. Um, like physical damage and getting uh poison but also not proccing regeneration on freevia was also really key to helping with that but the thing that i'm getting to here is that these protection mechanics if that's really the big selling mechanism for these guys <clears throat> it's just not that good and you know we've seen this with helena and with vivi in that you know that's that team is basically number one for a lot of reasons, and that helps. But at the same time, going up against a team with Elia the Alabaster and her ability to give everyone the ability to remove, re-raise, it's really difficult to land your damage before they've removed your re-raise. Because you want to put your re-raise on first, they want to put their re-raise removal on first, so either you seal it, by hitting them first or they seal you by hitting you first and it just like theoretically this gives you like a 50 50 chance on this and i guess it's better than nothing and but it's really the other aspects of these characters the ability to sleep and stun lock a lot of the healing a lot of the uh chaining a lot of the aoe type stuff with the two characters it's not necessarily re-raise protection. So if this is a big selling point to you, maybe it shouldn't be. Really. Um, also, shields are meant to be pretty disposable. Uh, being able to protect shields is an interesting mechanic. It is a strong mechanic, but um, you know they're meant to go away anyway. Just being hit will cause them to go away over time. So it's not always the best. There are some ways to kind of game that. And I'm not saying the A2 isn't really cool. And it's awesome that like this is a voiced A2 as well. But the second issue is really the biggest problem. And the one that has kept me from being excited about this collaboration. Even though Nier Automata is like probably my favorite game. Um, even, even bigger than uh, Final Fantasy in a lot of ways. I just think that game hit a lot of things right. And just for commemorative potential i would love to pull on this but at the same time as a war of the visions player with limited resources it's been like two years since this collaboration came out these units really got left behind building up the older units even building up 9s here it only is it only feels limited in rewarding in, in its rewardingness the fact that he can protect and give protect at the same time is great um, I would say that kind of makes up for some of the other disappointments uh, in how his he may have been upgraded, but um, I'm not saying that any of it's particularly bad. I'm just saying that he's been around for a while. He needs a lot of help, and I'm not sure that he got all of it. Um, but he's a free unit, so of course he's going to get left behind over time, and I'm not sure that... 2B will ever really have the same place in the meta that she once did regardless of her upgrades. I mean, she used to be able to dodge everybody and super consistently as well. She could be the one unit on the team that you couldn't handle and she would wipe the floor with your entire team. This really isn't the case as much for her anymore and the new units may be really good and they are really good. Like, I've, I've looked at their kits, I've heard about their kits, I've heard about what they're doing to the meta. They're very powerful for now but what happens when they get left in an awkward armpit and then don't get updated for a while and also we are potentially possibly overdue for the next like reincarnation level system to be added to the game they're already updating a number of things but they're starting to run out of room we're also starting to get to the point where we have native 140 characters that are starting to be in line for upgrades we're already seeing ominous upgrades uh for instance so you know at, at some point we're going to have to start adding a, a new kind of thing to have new things to update because that's half of what we're doing here in this game is updating old units while releasing new ones to compete with them um so really i feel like 
uh, something there there is kind of a high potential for these units especially to <clears throat> you know just be updated to 140 a couple of months before we get 160 at a brave shift or something um, and that would be really bad for them because again that would mean that for like the two year cycle before we get our next recollaboration uh, they would be 20, 20 uh, levels below par, you know what I mean? They would be basically, and like, I think that they're going to hold out well, even if that's the case, they are quite strong, again. I think they'll kind of maintain themselves in a lot of ways that Sorrow did, and Sorrow shows up in this video, even now, and even only at level 120. Um, but... You know, 9S is pretty decent. If you have him at 120, it's a it's a good idea to maybe 140 him. He'll he'll do spear things for you. He's very accurate. He's a he's a good boy. Um, good. But also, I noticed that as I was building Strike, I also inadvertently built up a lot of spear based stuff. So now I have a spear team, and that's where I'm going to be showing off uh, Veritas of the Wind. But also the strong synergy between Elda and uh, Glacella. Either Glacella, actually. Both Glacellas, if you want to. But uh, just keep in mind that, um, like I was saying, even though he's very powerful for what he is, um, Veritas of the Winds is also stuck at 115 at the moment in a 140 world, and that makes him still considerably powerful. Like, he's pretty fast, um, but he doesn't really have the HP or attack that you would really be expecting, but he makes up for it by having really good kit. And also, this team is just largely very, very accurate, which is quite awesome. It, it also isn't resisted by a lot of things, and I think one of the really strong things in the meta, and there's another talking point right there, that debuff is huge. Um, it turns off any sort of auto-restore, and if you can get it out first like that, like it can shut opposing teams down um, that should have more AP, don't. It's even better for kind of gating out older units that really need that extra AP somehow, or a lot of newer units that had that uh, AP region built into their kit. Um, Locke being one of the good examples of this, but also Edward. Um, so maybe some free units that really get screwed by this. Um, but also it steals some AP as well, and I think turns off haste. So it just does a lot of stuff in addition to uh, racing crit evasion. So this is a great reason to get Veritas of the Heavens up to 99, so you can go ahead and get that. And you can do that just by clearing story and the uh, admittedly tedious process of clicking a whole lot of bingo boards. There's nine total bingo boards. And even when you think that's enough, and this will get him to 115, um, you'll have to farm for his red job memories. I haven't seen them anywhere. I mean, they're in room J, um, but like they're not in a shop or anything. So there's no like other way of getting them. You're going to have to farm for them, it looks like. So maybe do that this Saturday. But um, while I don't really think that there's a lot of reasons that you would necessarily pull on this unless there is a you're really excited for one of these units, you really want to collect one. Um, I just feel like there's potential, if there's not something else driving this for you, uh, if you're not playing ice or barriers in a way, or if there's not a special, special synergy that you think is so important that you need to pull it, um, I just don't think that this is a good collaboration to invest in. And I think that all Final Fantasy collaborations all kind of have this problem, but this one comes in an awkward time. If they come like right after an upgrade, you can be sure that they have good shelf life because that upgrade cycle is every one to two years, so they're going to stick around in power for roughly one to two years, but I don't think that there's good chances of this happening. Um, and like the original near collaboration I think came right after 120 was unlocked relatively... S oh no, actually... Yeah, no, it was between... 10 and 7 um, so it had a good shelf life but I don't think that this one will have as good of a shelf life for a lot of reasons uh, that being said I do kind of especially if you have a team like this like I wish I had 9s on this account and I may build him just to put him on this team because I think he would be really interesting on it it's already really good against physical in a lot of ways so it's it would be a great team to have protected protect 
Um, and also it's a really high accuracy team as well, so it would also make a lot of sense with 9S. It would be a really good team to put him on, so if you have something like this and you already have him at 120, he's definitely worth it. And I'm not sure they would say the same thing about 2B and upgrading her. So I think 9S is the only one out of this that I really necessarily recommend, unfortunately. Um, but there are some other cool things that came with Veritas of the Wind, other than just this really cool TMR that does a lot of things across the entire board instantaneously. Also a really cool body, really great AoE resistant shred on the sky, and a lot of good uh, um, offensive kit as well. Um, he's a really good unit, even though he doesn't have an LB, um, and free, easy to build, quick to build as well, um, unless you count all the time that you're clicking through, through bingo boards. That's not really all that fast at all. But um, in addition to all of that, one of the things he's kind of bringing with him, and after you get done clicking through the, the bingo boards, you may realize that you could actually buy more shards, and I'm not sure exactly how many are available, because I haven't been able to complete it, and I haven't really like clicked through it like that. I don't think you can get the 120, because it still says stat crease on his, uh, on his ability board, so I don't think that that's available yet, but you should be able to get really close to 120. Um, and of course, you can probably like barracks him to 120, uh, maybe. If they'll allow you to, I, it, it still susses me out that it's like only it says stat increase. Uh, that's weird to me. But legendary reliquaries now, or at least the first one, the one for the Genji Gauntlet, which is an amazing accessory that I highly recommend having five star or better, um, and the Blood Sword, which if you can do it, I highly recommend taking this all the way fully awakened plus one right now. How are you going to do that though? Legendary Reliquaries may have been a challenge for you in the past, but this is the first one released. So, relatively speaking, it's probably one of the easier ones. It's also a little bit easier of a task for uh, Ice players because there's a lot of really powerful wind on this team that can hold you back. Um, probably a little bit of a disadvantage as well for Earth players. Um, if you have an Earth team, you probably want them to go first, but... The big upgrade to this is going to make it a lot easier for a lot of people to clear so that you can at least get 5 star Genji Glove, 5 star Blood Sword. What you're going to need to do is set a third team. And think about how this third team layers in here, but a lot of people I think that could come close to finishing this before should be able to complete awakening these two weapons pretty easily with a third team. Because a third team really just gives you the longevity to push through it fairly easily and if you can do that then it will unlock kind of a stage two which is almost exactly the same with a bit of a difficulty ramp if you can um also it's only going to allow you to take two teams as opposed to three just kind of like the other system was when it launched um it'd be cool to see three teams in here i still don't quite think I could beat it all the way if I could though but if you can get about halfway through this I think to like level four you get enough to plus one one of these pieces of equipment and if you can take it a little bit further than that you can also get it to five star and unlock its higher passives just plus one it though will get you higher stats on it as well so uh, kind of a two-fold upgrade that unlocks incrementally kind of like the previous uh, legendary well aquarius except there's kind of less increments and it's a little bit harder to progress now but it's also easier to get the base weapons and the base weapons are still the best basically the best in the game um the genji glove is just absurd it's as powerful as a weapon in a lot of ways um and it's just an accessory so it's really good for like potentially tanks that aren't necessarily wearing a weapon but want something like this or a great way to just pump damage on something that has uh like a tmr armor and a ideal like maximized weapon so you know it's It's quite good. Um, but I would probably recommend, even though the Genji Glove is basically universal, it's going to boost anyone's damage. 
I really think that the blood sword might be the better get. So many people can equip swords. It's a mainly physical sword. It is strong enough that some mages might might actually get a little bit more benefit out of it than you would expect, but it's not necessarily designed for them the way it is for physical units. Um, but the HP restore is now 20% if you can get it fully awakened on plus one, and it's giving you AP accuracy, I think, um, man eater, just a lot of uh, dope passives and a lot of power on that thing as well. Moving into our third team I'm showing off, this is going to be Comrol on a strike team. And uh, I haven't done it yet, I'm going to do it after this fight, but uh, two of these units by the end of this video will be fully reincarnated, and Kamral isn't one of them. I'm only going to take him to about 25. <laughs> uh, just, I actually ran out of the MR scrolls. They've been handing us the UR scrolls like crazy, and I actually ran out of MR scrolls. So I need to go buy some more of those for myself. And I've been building so many things and doing so much and also putting so much content together for you guys. I haven't really had time to do that. So if you appreciate that, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, hit that link in the description also to check out other Jackie Fox stuff. I've got, you know, whatever you could want, podcasts, books, um discord we can we can chill hang out uh we can just kind of kind of hang like this perine is um disabled but still tirelessly marching forward and surviving and thriving like a max perine is ought to do um but yeah no these these two are really powerful and while i don't think that Kamral is necessarily the most amazing character he does have courage which means he has some survivability he also does a lot of damage and can do good AoE damage in strike, so he chains really well with these guys. If he can stay alive, he can take some people out, maybe one or two even by finishing off what these guys can't finish, even though he's not you know, anywhere near their level. But the other thing that's really, really stupid good about Kamral is that Kamral has a cross-shaped uh, AoE pattern um, that gives courage removal on damage, which you'll notice is basically uh, the courage version of what Elia the Alabaster can do. And, you know, I was talking earlier in this video about how I don't think that the protection mechanics are all that good because they require you to land your damage first. Well, I think the removal effects or the removal on damage effects, especially in a cross AoE like this, are incredibly powerful. And really if they were less powerful then maybe the other deal could balance them better but they are just kind of broken so this team is very consistently going to remove both re-raise and courage from my opponents and that is just going to mess things up so already they can remove uh re-raise both of them um let's see if Comral. now Comral's going to go for courage and some ap first Right now, uh, both Kamral and Elia have the ability to remove re-rays. Perrine's gonna get in there with her LB, start a chain. Re-rays removed from Kamral. Also, that counter was really powerful. It's, uh, <laughs> but they still haven't chunked through her yet quite um but damn that lb hitting her and her alone from vv was very powerful so kamaral has also removed re-raise from helena now at this point and finally uh re-raise was removed from vv by alaya so this is like the ideal team this is the most steroided out team for protecting re-raise and it fails completely to protect even a single one of its units from this team and even if they were backing it up with courage you know Comral could absolutely throw uh, a wrench in the works for that this team also has a bit of re-raise at least on Elda so we'll see how that goes um, it has Courage by way of Glacella. So. Ooh, 
lot, a lot of damage to Elza there, not retaliating with much, and that, uh, that HP down really helped. This is such a beef cake of a team. And also, did you see that? Wow. Look, I realize that she is also, wow, backup. Um, I realize that she's a tank, but she barely did damage to Kamral. He's not a tank either, and he's also not in her element. But after that, I, I want you to notice... Alaya went out there and took two people on other sides of the field. Opposite sides of the field. She hit both of them. She broke their CT. From one, she removed Courage. From the other, she removed Reraise. Both of them fell to the hit, even though each one of them had a survivability mechanic up and operating um, before they took damage from her. She will wipe an entire field, even if it's teched out on this team, and that is just ridiculous. Um, also, this team does pretty darn well, as you would expect. Uh, in limited right now so I'm gonna get to some guild battle footage after this and really show you how this team is working also show you a less tricked out team um, but just a, a fire team for him to exist on it, it, honestly it's not quite as good I I just think that strike is an amazing place right now and um, outside of that you know he does again have his interesting mechanics with courage um, he does bring that to fire, which is good, but I, outside of uh, limited, like trying him on an all fire, like new player friendly team um, against people who weren't playing by like limited cost rules, weren't running 50 cost units, were instead running 100 cost units, and it didn't, it did not go very well. <laughs> unfortunately for Kamral, but here on a 250 cost team he seems to be doing absolutely fine and like again I could maybe make the argument here that he is maybe the ideal third in a lot of ways because of that courage um that courage removal on hit just nobody can can deal with this team it's hard to resist strike damage it's hard to um, resist the types of defense penetration, the, the man-eater, all the stuff that they have. Um, the only way to beat it is to go even more uh, defensive strike aggressive by throwing um, Alphonse into the mix. So this is two versions of a guild battle Kamral team. Um, both using kind of rainbowish mechanics, one of them being the defense team being more of a bait team, trying to get water players to attack it so that it can respond with the best uh, DPS and best um, lightning tank in the game, which is certainly not something that you're expecting, and also Kamral can still remove that courage even from water players, perfectly fine. Um, but with all of that being said, we're just gonna, I'm just going to let some of this stuff play out and uh, get to the final things that I wanted to talk about today. So there is going to be an upgrade coming um, that's kind of a compliment. It's it's a massive, massive, massive update. I'm not sure when it's going to come, but it upgrades our older vision cards into Elder BCs. Anything that is not a um, that's not a hollow VC you can become an elder VC. This is an additional awakening after 99. You're going to need materials and those materials, there's going to be a number of ways to get them, but if you need additional ones and you want to start pre farming for them, the, uh, the method that I've been telling you about for getting the soul shards or soul metals, you can also do that for vision cards through the Guild Battle Shop. The Guild Battle Shop will allow you to buy five Golem and five Fenrir shards per day. That'll get you, once you've maxed those VCs, that'll get you uh, 10 rainbows per day. And that's the currency that's going to um, get you the uh, awakening currency for these. So you can unlock a bunch of vision cards when the system comes out. So don't be getting those like uh, one your pull tickets for 200. Save that currency up and uh, use it for the elder VCs. 
and this is going to add just additional benefits to those and one of the things that's going to be especially interesting about these they're getting a general boost in power but additionally they're also going to be a bit more like relative they're 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 not going to be more powerful in the sub slot they're definitely going to be the most powerful in the main slot right i don't want you to think about it like that but relatively speaking they will be less limited by being in the sub slot they will be more powerful relative to the sub slot than other cards that are in the sub slot because they'll have less reductions uh so again like if you want to upgrade um, cards that already work really well in the sub slot you might be minimizing the level of advantage that you're getting there even though that makes sense to do um, and simultaneously if you're avoiding some of the biggest and baddest cards that could be your main VCs why not upgrade the things that you're going to be getting 100% of the benefit from you know um, so I don't think that there's really a cause to like think about it as oh elder VCs are only worth upgrading for the ones that are in sub position like there's some advantages to that but I think there's definitely an advantage to upgrading your main VCs as well once the system comes out so it's definitely one you want to farm for and keep in mind and then since we're about a month behind JP JP is getting their next expansion to the Legendary Reliquary system, I believe. I haven't heard as much about that, but I assume that it's coming with it because I was on roughly the same track. Um, I think that Veritas of the Waters, who I'm very excited for, she was one of my favorite FFBE units, um, definitely dates me as a player, but like when I came in with certain equipment, I think I was running Ring of the Lucii to give her Ultima as just like a double castable bomb um there were or not not ultima alterna yeah um but i really love that she was a status major and she has big aoe status she also has some amazing potential penetrations in her kit um another just amazing free unit and she is going to be um her her shards are going to be obtainable through the arena metal shop, so save those up, apparently. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with this, why it's going this way. Maybe people complain that the other system is too hard. Maybe this won't be linked to the legendary reliquaries. I'm not entirely sure, and I'm definitely not sure, because this feels like an experiment on their side. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to play out once it reaches us, but there is potential for kind of it to work out that way that might be how it goes i'm not really sure what's going to happen with that but i'm super excited for uh veritas of the waters and i think that she has a lot of potential i think um i'm pretty sure she has re-raised so she could fit into a rainbow version of the helena vv team so helena vv veritas of the waters um, you've got the re-raise protection mechanics. Everyone on the team is going to have re-raise, I believe. Pretty sure she has it. Um, actually, I think that she can give someone else re-raise as well, which is pretty cool. Um, not that I think anyone from this team benefits from that, but double re-raise is, is pretty neat. Um, so maybe if you maybe if you only have one of these. But the reason I say this is because she has not only powerful AOE magic, and power, well, she has Kiriga. Her her white mage sub is kind of disappointing. Um, Blade Soul also is a bit disappointing, but her main job is what I wanted it to be, and it brings in um, a lot, a lot, a lot of both breaks to water resistance especially, but also multi-status uh, AOE attacks. And the reason I like that they're multi-status, I wish they would have added a third status, um, much like her original form, even if it meant that it didn't do damage, because it's really hard to build against multiple statuses in a build. And this is already a team that has sleep through Helena and stun through BB. So once you start adding like poison and paralyze or disable or other things to that mix, it becomes impossible to counter through your rune setup or carefully choosing your units somebody is getting some status and uh you know with all of them being mages they can run their faith naturally as high as possible and it's great um but uh actually now that we've gotten into the fire guild v guild footage uh total foible um that makes this team a lot less good than it could be 
is just the fact that um, my support's getting stuck in the corner. If I put her in the middle of the map, she would be a lot better. And she would actually kind of interact with people and heal and do the things she's supposed to do instead of buffing herself in the corner. But uh, Mont is a beast. <laughs> so he's doing great regardless. But thank you all for tuning in. I think that's about all I have to say, really. About all I can say um, in terms of how the game is going and where it's going. I'm really excited to have a piercing team. Um... I'm excited for the idea that maybe I'll get a new vision. I don't think I'm going to go for the one that's out now. It looks good, but I'm I'm just not sure that I want that one necessarily. I, I think I could afford it for that account, and I could, but I don't know. Maybe I'll wait for one to drop into my lap if there's a couple more floating out. I'll take a, take a check on that and see how that's going. Um, see how many in total there are if I have most of them. Then maybe I will get this one. Um, if there's only like six or seven. Um, but if there's a couple more out there, I think I'll just wait to get one and put, keep the seam on the back burner. I mean, this is already a water, wind, strike, and now piercing team. So, wow. <laughs> and, you know, also, this is another team that's going to be benefiting. Um, this account is also going to benefit from Veritas of the Waters. So I'm going to have a fucking Veritas of the Waters. On this. Even though I think this isn't necessarily the account that will utilize Veritas of the Waters best. Um, definitely one, I mean, I have to. Obligatory. This is a water account. I need to build the water unit. So, I'm um, going to be testing out Veritas of the Waters. Now, a couple accounts in a couple different formats, both um, on a water team, maybe also on a wind team. She could be interesting with Sodaly, even though that's way too much re raise there as well. But, lots, lots of fun status tricks. Um. Hmm. I don't know. She could also be particularly interesting with uh, Shalza, who has double courage. So you could get courage and re-raise all the way around the team pretty quickly with the two of those working together. And Charles is going to show that to us here with Puppet Master. And the other uh, cool benefit to this, and I think this benefit is roughly shared by Veritas of the Waters, is that in addition to giving that status to both of them, it's also going to reduce the caster's hate, which is really great for a support until they start wailing on a unit like this. But hey, this guy's not very good to magic, so she needs to be in this fight, even though she's tries to let everybody fight for her, she definitely needs to take this hunk of armor down. Of course, I guess she's just going to get Bahamut to do it for her. <laughs> How lazy are these royals? Alright, so <laughs> anyways, thank you for watching. Enjoy the Nier Automata music. That's the other thing that I really enjoy about this collaboration, is just being able to hear that music again. It's so good. So I'm just going to let the next couple of fights play out with that music rocking and rolling in the background, and I'll see you in the next one.